Hi everyone. So today I just want to talk about uh, graphing motion. So we can have a position versus time graph. Um, and what this is, is graphing an object's position as a function of time. So if you look at the situation here on the left, we have a car that's changing a position every 10 meters every one second. If we were to graph from this motion diagram into um, this position versus time graph, we can put data points for each of those one positions. So at time zero, we're at position zero. And then we're also given that at one second, we're positioned at 10 meters. So that gives us this data point here. At time two seconds, we're at 20 meters. And we go on from there. We draw a best fit line. We see here that it's actually a straight line um, that fits this data trend. We can also plot our position versus time graph for an object that's accelerating or speeding up. So here we start from rest, and every second um, we increase our displacement. Um, so we literally just graph um, our position at certain time intervals, whatever, in the, whatever we collect the data for or whatever is given to us in the problem. Um, so here our best fit line is going to be a curve. So one obvious thing we can see from a position versus time graph, it's going to tell us its position at a certain time. We can also gather information from the slope of a position versus time graph. So if you remember, slope is rise over run. So that's going to be our rise, which is our y-axis. In this case, that's position. And divided by our x-axis, in this case it's time, so position divided by time. And more specific, we're dealing with changes, so it's a change in position over change in time. Remember that, that's velocity. Um, we can also do some quick unit analysis to see that. right? So our rise over run is going to be units of meters divided by seconds, so that's meters per second, which is velocity. Right, so the slope of a position versus time graph tells us an object's velocity, and that's really cool. We can also qualitative, quanti ugh, excuse me, qualitatively compare the speeds of an object based on these graphs. And when I say qualitative, I mean without numbers, not quantitative. Quantitative means I'm going to do some number crunching and see what the exact velocity is. In this case, we're just going to analyze the shapes, the shapes of our graphs to see what that tells us. So here on the left, we've got a position versus time graph that has a gradual positive slope. Right. In this case, we're going to call this um, the direction rightward being positive. So we have a slow rightward constant velocity. So the next one here, we've got a sharper or steeper slope, steeper in the positive direction. So this is going to be a fast rightward constant velocity. So we're speeding up a lot faster. Or excuse me, we're increasing our displacement a lot faster. Next, we've got a slow leftward constant velocity. If you notice here, we have a negative slope. That means our velocity is going to be negative. Um, and it's going to be a slow value just because it's not that steep of a slope. And then finally, here we have a fast leftward constant velocity. So we have a negative slope. And it's going to be a large value for the negative slope. So it's going to be a fast speed. We can also determine if the object's accelerating based on the slope of the position versus time graph. So if our position versus time graph is a straight line, we know our velocity is going to be a constant value, right? Because our slope is the same value throughout this line. So because our slope is constant, our velocity is constant. And if we're staying with the same velocity, that means we're not accelerating. Right? Our velocity is not changing, so we have zero acceleration. Um, conversely here, we have a changing slope. That means our velocity is changing. So if we have a changing velocity over time, that means our object's accelerating. So in this situation here on the right, we have um, an object that's accelerating. Um, this is actually accelerating positively. So whenever we have um, the curvature being concave up, it's going to be a positive acceleration. If the curvature is concave down, it's going to be a negative acceleration. One quick way to think about this is it kind of looks like it's part of a smiley face. It's positive acceleration. It looks like it's part of a frowny face it's going to be a negative acceleration. All right, so now I have some questions for you guys. So I want you to first describe the motion of this object in words. So we have a situation here graphed on the right. It's position versus time of whatever this object is. What the object is is up to you. You can be creative, but school-appropriate creative. 
All right, so one possible explanation for this situation is you're at a stop sign. So we start at our stop sign, and in one second, you walk two meters at a constant rate in front of the stop sign. So I'm calling in front of the stop sign the positive direction. Um, then for one second, you stay at that two meter position, and then you retract back to two meters behind the stop sign, um, and it takes you one second to do so at a constant rate. And then you stay behind the stop sign for two seconds. And then you run back to the stop sign. Um, and then you're at a constant rate. And then, so now we're at time period, six seconds. And then for two seconds, you stay at the stop sign there. And that's what one possible situation that this graph describes. All right, so number two, what is the object's minimum position and what is its maximum position? So the object's minimum position, we can see here is the minimum point on our graph, and that's going to be negative two meters. Its maximum position is going to be the maximum point on this graph, and that's at positive two meters. At what time is the position of the object zero? So since this is a position versus time graph, the position is going to be zero whenever our um, line crosses the x-axis. That's going to be a position of zero. So we have that at time zero. We're at a position of zero, and then we cross the axis again at two and a half seconds. And then we're at position zero between six and eight seconds. Four asks for when the object is at rest. The slope of this graph is going to tell us the velocity of the object. If we're at rest, we have a velocity of zero. So we have a velocity of zero here from the time equals one second to two second region. And then we flatline again here. Um, between three seconds and five seconds, and then again, once between six and eight seconds, we again have a velocity of zero. So our object is at rest. Number five asks, what is the object's velocity from t equals zero to t equals one second? We can calculate the velocity by um, doing rise over run. So because because it's our the slope of position versus time graph. So our rise is 2 meters, our run is 1 second, so our velocity is going to be 2 meters per second. And then we also want the object's velocity from time 2 seconds to 3 seconds. All right, so again, we take the slope of the graph. So we start at 2 meters and we go to negative 2 meters. So our rise is a negative 4 meters, and our run, again, is just 1 second. We go from 2 seconds to 3 seconds, so it's a time interval of 1 second. So our slope is going to be negative 4 meters divided by 1 second, so that gives us negative 4 meters per second. That's our velocity along that path. So if you have any questions about that, see me in class, um, and we can hopefully answer those questions. So what happens if our position versus time graph is curved? So if we're accelerating, how can we determine this, the velocity via the slope? Well, we can calculate the instantaneous velocity at any point by drawing a tangent line and then finding its slope. So say here in this, we have a position versus time graph of a certain object, and that graph is in this blue line here. So at time equals 20 seconds, let's say we wanted to calculate what its velocity was. So at 20 seconds, we draw, draw a tangent line. Um, and then from that tangent line, we can just calculate what the slope of that tangent line is. So it looks like here in this situation, um, if we just did some um, analysis of this graph, our range here um, would be 5 seconds. And then our change in our um, position would be 26 meters. So 26 meters per 5 seconds. Um, I don't have a calculator here, but 25 divided by 5 is 1, so it's going to be slightly larger than 1 meters per second. That's going to be our instantaneous velocity at um, time equals 20 seconds. For those of you in calculus, um, it might be helpful for you, so it's just an aside for those of you who aren't, but for those in calculus, here we have, if you had the equation for our 
um, position curve here. Um, it's going to be a function of t squared, actually. But what you would do is take the derivative with respect to t of this position versus time function. And you would take the derivative that's going to actually give you a function for your velocity. And then from that function, you can plug in actually any time for t you want, and that will give you the velocity. Um, so that's pretty cool. But all right, I digress. Coming back to using this tangent line method, that's going to be helpful to analyze the motion of objects qualitatively. So in class, you won't actually have to implement this tangent line to calculate an instantaneous velocity, but it's going to help us think about um, the slope of a graph. Right? So here on the left, we have a position versus time graph, where we have um, a negative velocity. But if we think about tangent lines, our slope here at the beginning of the graph is not very steep. All right, so we're going to be moving kind of slow. But then as time goes on, the slope gets steeper and steeper. So our object is going from some slower speed to a faster speed over time. Here on the right, we have the opposite situation happening. Right, So if we analyze the slope, we have a steep slope to begin with, and then it gets shallower and shallower. So we're going from a fast speed to a slower and slower speed over time. So that's all I have for you for position versus time graphs. So please see my next video where we're going to talk about velocity versus time graphs and acceleration versus time graphs.